Marywood University, a small, Catholic, liberal arts university tucked into a neighborhood just outside the city of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Since its founding in 1915, Marywood has been called home by thousands of students. But what lies beyond the arch, past the trees and under the buildings? Does the school have dark secrets just waiting to be uncovered by anyone brave and curious enough to do so? I want to accept the challenge. I'm Ellen Franz, and this is The Mysteries of Marywood. Marywood University was founded in 1915 by the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. At this time, the school admitted only women, with 34 women making up the school's first graduating class in 1919. The school was founded in a time when higher education was not readily available to women, and Marywood became the first Catholic college for women in Pennsylvania. In 1928, administrators commissioned the construction of O'Reilly Hall, which became the school's first dormitory. The building included suites of rooms, parlors, an elevator, a foyer, and a formal dining room. O'Reilly Hall was known for its art, with oriental rugs in the foyer, stained glass windows, and a mosaic on the wall from Italy, as well as chandeliers in the dining room. In the 1970s, O'Reilly Hall was renamed Regina Hall after the mother house where the IHM sisters lived and the campus chapel was housed burned down. The university then moved the chapel into Regina Hall. Regina Hall now houses 47 students in single-style rooms. However, Regina Hall is known for more than just being a dorm. In a survey taken by the Pacers Against Sexual Assault Club in 2023, students named Regina Hall as the most haunted building on campus. This comes from a decades-old rumor that an IHM sister took her own life in the third floor stairwell. This rumor stems from the mysterious tombstone behind the Center for Natural and Health Sciences that reads, For Barbara. According to the IHM sisters on campus, the Marywood archives, and local newspapers, there was absolutely no sister who committed suicide, and the tombstone was a reference to Barbara Hoffman, former Marywood English professor whose class pranked her with a funeral. Though the rumors are not real, Marywood students are still convinced that the building is haunted. Sophomore multimedia communications major Cheyenne Amick lived in room 326 on the end next to the stairwell where the rumored event took place. She says that she had a few instances that were spooky and unexplainable. I have two. I have two ghost stories. The one happened when I was in 326. Um, I was laying in bed and my laptop just turned on and opened up PowerPoint. Um, it was weird because previously I had not had PowerPoint open and you can't yeah you can't you don't, there's no way to explain it and then my other ghost story was in spring 2022 um i was in the community bathroom in regina because i still i had a single again um and my phone fell off of the ledge in front of the mirror and it cracked, the back of my phone cracked. Sophomore art therapy and clinical psychology major MJ Haynes also experienced some unexplainable spooky things while living in Regina Hall. I mean, you can hear like people walking in the halls like where normally there wouldn't be people walking the halls like 4 a.m., stuff like that. Um, I mean, it could just be a student, but um, it seems like a little too faint to be a student, if that makes sense. Um, I had like, I was sleeping facing the wall like on my side and um, I just switched my room on the third floor and I've had an instance in both rooms. So I was like right by the elevator and now I'm like all the way on the other side. And um, I would like sleep on my side facing the wall and I'd literally feel like someone like tapped my shoulder. Like I'd feel like a presence like in the room and then like coming towards me and then I literally like felt someone like tap my shoulder. I was in the basement and we were having game night and I swear like I just saw someone like standing in the staircase. Even though there is no proof of any suicide in Regina Hall, I am determined to at least find proof of a haunting. I'm here in the third floor of Regina where MJ had their two ghost experiences. Um, for our investigations for this documentary, I will be using an EMF detector. EMF detectors measure electromagnetic fields in the air, which scientists say humans have in their brains that gets left behind when they die. This is why many ghost hunters use EMF detectors in their investigations. 
Their only flaw is that any sort of electricity sets them off. You know that there is some kind of energy present when the EMF detector goes off Wait. nowhere near electricity. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, well. If we go away from the light, it's like... Oh, it moved. Because it was right here, but it wasn't... I don't know, man. <laughs> After possibly catching something on the detector, the investigation continued. Unfortunately, the scariest thing started becoming the potential judgment from other students. <laughs> People are gonna think I'm insane right now. <laughs> After finding nothing else in the hallway, I decided to move my investigation elsewhere. Okay, so this is the third floor stairwell where the nun supposedly killed herself. Um, let's see if the EMF detector picks anything up. I know everyone who's lived on this end of the floor has had some kind of uh, freaky experience. Not looking like anything. While looking for ghosts, I remembered that my camera person, assistant, and roommate Emma had her own ghost experience in Regina. So I was here at this sink and I was washing my hands and I just happened to look up into the mirror and I saw behind me uh, the shadowy figure kind of cross away. And when I looked, there's only two stalls back here. So uh, I checked both of them and nobody was there and I hightailed it out. Okay, we're gonna EMF detect the bathroom. Um, the numbers just started going up. Let me see if I can get them to go up again. Hold it like this so everyone can see. Interesting, it was moving. So let me see if I put this here. Okay, if there's anything in the bathroom with us, please make your way to the window still. Nope. We were not having much luck with the rest of Regina Hall. The detector never beeped again, and the numbers on it only went up in one more spot. My head in the urinal. Oh, 31, 35, 36, 30, wow. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, <laughs> is there anyone? I'm sorry, am I interrupting anyone doing their business in this bathroom? Am I, like, are you going to the bathroom and I'm interrupting it? Oh, it went down. Maybe they're done. <laughs> Maybe they're Check done. Check the sink, are they washing their hands? Are they washing their hands? Even when you're dead, you should be, you Practicing. know, proper hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> this ghost is gross! They didn't wash their hands! Despite the chaos and the haunted toilets, we concluded in the first investigation that there is some sort of energy living in Regina Hall. However, this was all before I met Jocelyn. Jocelyn Hiddle is a freshman theater education major who has been hypersensitive to the paranormal since she was younger. I have been hypersensitive to paranormal stuff since three years old, I think my parents say. Um, around the age of like three or so, I would go to my dad and tell him the things that his nanny was telling me when I had never met his nanny before in my entire life. She died when he was 14. And apparently all the things that I were saying were like super conducive to who she was when she was alive. Um, after that, when my great grandfather died, I had like repeat apparitions of him come to me during the night to tuck me into bed, and that was before I could understand like the permanence of death. But I kept on telling my family, like I was seeing pop up. Um, but ever since then, I've seen shadow figures, I've seen spirits, I've seen what it can only be described as demons. Um, I can feel them. They look like a person to me, like the same way that I look at Ellen right now, who's standing behind the camera. I decided to take Jocelyn with me back to Regina to see if she could pick up on any spirits in the building. So. We are going to use a necklace as a pendulum 
And through the pendulum, the spirits, if they're around, are able to manipulate the object because it takes very little kinetic energy to move. And we'll set premises of like what a yes means and what a no means. And it'll be either swinging like horizontally in a straight line or like in a circular motion. Can you show me what a yes is gonna mean? Okay, so that's swinging back and forth. Can you show me what a no means? Okay, it has begun circling. Can you stop? Thank you. Um, okay. Is there one spirit here? No, there is not one spirit here. So that means that there's multiple spirits here? Yes. Okay. Have you always, I'm gonna move my arm a little bit because it hurts. Have you always lived in this building? Yes, so the spirits have always been in this building. So just for clarification, the spirits that I'm speaking to have always been in this building, correct? Thank you. Can you stop? Thank you. What do you want to know? Ask it if it's an IHM sister. Okay. Are the spirits here with us, are any of them IHM sisters? Okay. It took a while, but it's telling me yes. Okay. And then ask if they killed themselves. Okay. The sister who's here with us, did they kill themselves in this building? Is that a hard yes? That's a hard yes. <gasps> they told me that nobody killed themselves in this <gasps> building. Can you stop it? Did you hang yourself? Can you ask if they hung themselves on the third floor stairwell? Okay. First and foremost, did you hang yourself in this building? So no, oh. didn't. Can you stop? Did the IHM sister who is here with us, did you kill yourself? Did I ask that or did I, I say hang? Did. I think you did, because you said yes. Oh yeah, 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 I did, okay. okay. The, IHS, the IHM sister who is with us, did your death take place in the third floor? Yes, it did. So yes, it. But your, it didn't kill it. So your death took place on the third floor, and you killed yourself, but you did not hang yourself. Correct. Correct. Okay. So we have a suicide nun, third floor. But not. Hanging. Not hanging. So the rumor is that the sister killed herself because of being gay, being pregnant, or having an affair. No. Okay. That's the rumor. It's okay. So we can ask. That, like, okay. Again, I'm speaking to the IHM sister who has said to be with us. Um, you've confirmed that you did, in fact, kill yourself on the third floor. And we around here have some rumors about that. And we want to try and figure out what the truth is. We want to try and tell your story for you. So if you killed yourself because you were gay, can you show me a yes? No. Okay. So you were not gay. Yes. So she was not gay. Did you kill yourself because you were pregnant? No. So you weren't pregnant? Yes. What was the third one? She was like having an affair. Okay. With did you kill yourself because you were having an affair? Yes. Do we know who she was having an affair with? No, it was just a rumor that she was having. Just I don't a know rumor. If it was like a priest, maybe asking. If she was okay. A 
So this person you were having an affair with, was it a man? Yes. Was it a priest? Yes. At least that's what the spirits are telling me. Interesting. Interesting. Do you want to know anything else? Is the priest, did the priest kill himself? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Did the priest kill himself as well? No. Is the priest still alive? Is the priest still alive that you had the affair with? No. Interesting. Did the priest go to heaven? Yeah, well then what's the point of the commandments? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that, I think, is it that I know. Okay. But. I want to... Just humor me. Maybe ask why she was here. That she, why'd she kill it? I guess you can't be like. <laughs> so why'd you do it and start spelling out letters? Because yeah. <laughs> it was like none of the nuns like lived here, so I don't know how to know. Yeah, that that's so interesting. We should we like go through mess of the methods of suicide until it says? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll start from hanging. <laughs> okay, still speaking to the IHM sister. Did you, did you hang yourself? Are you Googling methods of suicide? No, I'm texting everyone who I told okay. the rumor was not true. Okay. That I was wrong. Okay, no to the hanging. Okay. Did you drown yourself? No to the drowning. Did you take pills? No to taking pills. What's another way to kill yourself? Shooting. Did you shoot yourself? No. Split your oh, your did you did you cut yourself in a way? Oh my! Wait. I can like, kind of see her. Not in this space, but like I can see her face. Eh, she just looks like a nun. Oh. <laughs> you know? I mean, she's a white lady. I, I don't know. <laughs> but it's like, when we were talking about it, I had an image of somebody. Um, wait, were you in a bathtub? That's interesting. Were you blonde? It's another yes. Okay. So I had an image of somebody. Um, were you wearing a white nightgown? Yes. Okay. So I had an image of somebody in my head when we said that um, of a lady in a white nightgown in a bathtub with her wrist slit. And she said that. And she that. said, and uh, she was blonde. And I, yeah, she said that's what happened. And can you like explain on camera what you said to me about how you can see them? Oh yeah. So um, like <laughs> I guess kind of like the movie Sixth Sense, but um, like everybody has like physical eyes and physical ears. I call them your body eyes, your body ears. And then for me, I experience something that it's like my brain has its own set of eyes and its own set of ears. Um, so it's kind of like my imagination, except the things that I see and the things that I hear aren't things that I imagine. Um, it's just because I have a higher sensitivity to the supernatural. They're able to communicate with me in a way that they can't communicate with other people. So when I see something, oftentimes what I mean is that my brain eyes are seeing something. So it's like seeing the exact same space around me, except in my brain eyes, I can see something that's there that isn't there with my physical eyes. Um, or what just happened when the vision that I had of the nun, it was my brain eyes were showing me this vision, not of this room in particular, but of a another room where the like the spirit was showing me something that it wanted me to see. It is important to note that MJ's original room where the EMF detector went off is two doors down from the bathroom on the third floor. I think those are the only questions I have for it. I think there's anything else we should ask it. Um, I want to ask it something. Speaking to the IHM sister again, are you at peace? 
Yeah, she's chill. Okay. okay, that makes me happy. So this concludes our investigation into Regina. As you can tell, there is some kind of spirit living in there. Whether or not it's actually of a nun that killed herself, I guess we'll never really know. That's just another mystery of Marywood.